Mark here for Mark 2.0. Brian is joining me as always as my co-host. And we have a special treat for you today. The hit show is Welcome to Fletch. Here is William Tokarski, who plays Len. Welcome to the podcast, William. We are so thrilled to have you on. I am thrilled to be here. I enjoy this uh, sort of uh, promotion for the show. I'm just getting into it, but it's really great. I'm I'm laughing at my rear off here. Have you seen episode 106? <laughs> no, don't. Oh, I you have. know what? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Tell me what happens. It's my favorite episode. That's all. <laughs> I can't wait. Now explain to us how you got the role to begin with. I have no idea. <laughs> I love that response. Um, <clears throat> I'm not what you call a trained professional actor. I, um, uh, I retired from the real world back in 2009, chilled for a while. And for some reason, I wanted to go see Bill Murray and Robert Duvall filming a lovely little film in the city where I live called Gitlo with Rob, with, uh, uh, they were doing like a, a funeral home. And um, I never saw them. The van pulled up, the door in and out, and bang, bang, bang. But I spoke with some extras. And I said, well, that sounds like fun. And I started doing extra work. And it led to this. Now, if you have some time, I'll tell you how it led to this. But Please. Um, <clears throat> I just uh, did some extra work. And, and uh, I guess about six months in, I was on the set of Hunger Games Catching Fire. Wow. And I signed up to do like six days. I was a District 13 um, um, vagrant or, you know, uh, refugee. And I came back at lunchtime and got my phone out and looked at it. And there was a message from the young lady that cast the extras. She said, you have a speaking line with Jennifer Lawrence next week if you want it. My immediate oh, my response goodness. was, who got a hold of Rose's phone and is screwing with me? But <laughs> it, was, it was real. <laughs> um, but the interesting part is, is I was really dumb. I had no idea about acting and keeping a mark and an eye line and whatever. So I'm sure I had a lousy performance as judged by the fact that it never made the final cut. Hmm. You know, it's nowhere in the the film, although it might show up someday, but when they, when they do the anthology of all of them strung together and, you know, the unseen footage, but Indeed. I just really loved tr the treatment. I loved what I was doing. I was in this little bitty honey wagon, which is a real small dressing room, and uh, a production assistant knocked on the door and said, Mr. Jokarski, I said, yeah. He says, uh, Francis Lawrence, the director, is having a pre-production meeting. If you'd care to join him, Woody and Jennifer. Wow. Yeah. So I sat like a mouse in a corner and didn't say a word and just listened. And I said, this is good. And I worked two days to say the words, you want to get him killed? Make $2,400. And I says, man, this is all right. Well, the interesting thing is I've drawn oh, probably about 6,000 in residuals on top of that. So it's like, uh, this could make vacations a lot more fun. Yeah. So <clears throat> I started pursuing it. I ran down to the SAG office in Atlanta and spoke with the, the woman there. Melissa's her name. She says, I'll take your money, Billy, but why don't you work for a little bit? Why don't you take some classes. Why don't you try to find an agent, then come back and see me? Two years later, I joined SAC. Wow, I'm feeling quite inspired here. Well, yeah, yeah the difference is, okay, um, um, it's easy when you have a face that looks like a foot. Oh, goodness. I have a unique look that they seem to gravitate to. And I was getting bumped semi-regular. I would go work as an extra and I would get, I get, I got bumped on your pretty face is going to hell for adult swim. I got bumped on a Georgia lottery commercial. So, I, uh, and, and a friend of mine, she says, you, uh, I'll make a recommendation to, to, to an agent. And the agent's name was Jana Van Dyke. 
And she was having a meet and greet at one of these social gatherings that actors all like to go to. <clears throat> and I told her, I, and she lived actually, the, the, the office wasn't too far from where I lived at the time. And I says, oh, you're going to be my agent. I think I angered her son because he thought I was cocky. But, you know, it's like, I'm, this is what I do. This is what I am. This is what I like. And she signed me. And she said, I'm going to sign you, but on one condition. She said, I want you to take an acting class, an on-camera acting class, because I don't want you to embarrass me. My very first acting class was with a group in Atlanta called Drama Inc. And my instructor was, his name is and was uh, Jason McDonald. Fast forward oh, eight years, nine years. And um, I'm a recurring character, not a series regular, just a recurring character on Welcome to Flatch. And who am I playing opposite in episode one? My first instructor, Jason McDonald. No kidding. Wow. I did a, um, um, an interview with the local Fox station similar to this with Jason, me, and the, um, the, the good time guy on the Fox station. And uh, they're going to do a little season primo promo and discuss that but i tried to pitch that a year ago when the show first came out and they just finally come around and said yeah we'll do something like that but yeah that's my story so <clears throat> i mean i my parents and my wife's parents were poor when they retired they didn't have money to do anything and i decided that wasn't going to happen so i was very careful with, you know, my retirements and whatever. And I have a, a pension, a retirement and, and a little and social security and a little bit of a 401k and I don't have any debt. So it's like, there's no desperation on my part. Here I am. You like me? Fine. If not, I'll just move on. I'll find something else. It don't matter. And when I get on set, I, I quote Jack Nicholson. Hey, if you got an urge, do it. Uh, <laughs> it always take two. <laughs> that's great so um yeah that's what i do and it, it seems to work now how i booked this job i have no idea um the it's based on an english comedy called this country and it has a character called len which is very similar to me but len doesn't have a drinking problem like i do <laughs> <laughs> I love um it. what i what i tell folks is Casting was a little different on this show. Instead of looking to hire an actor that could, a strong actor that could play a dim-witted curmudgeon with a slight drinking problem, they just decided to hire a dim-witted curmudgeon with a slight <laughs> drinking problem that has done a little acting. Oh, that's great. That's great. You know, and, and you know, you you just you project well, and your voice sounds so cool. You know, and you can play a wise uh, anybody. You know, in anything. Uh, you're just really quite well, versatile I, and, and energetic. It's great. I suffer from a, a disease called CRS. Are you familiar with that? No, I can't remember shit. <laughs> oh, I love it. So I don't, I, you know, I don't do well on a whole lot of dialogue, which this character does. In fact, on this show, I tell everybody I'm the highest paid actor on the show. If <laughs> you divide what I earn by the number of words I have to say. <laughs> you done the math. <laughs> oh, that's great. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to violate my non-disclosure agreement yeah. and i'm going yeah. to say today my whole dialogue for all day today was i have six very graphic questions and i'm not going to tell you anymore yeah. <laughs> that was my dialogue i mean you know it's, it's like it's like um this is this is what i do it's like johnny cash yeah you're familiar with johnny cash oh, oh yeah gosh, we're big yes, fans absolutely well jo when johnny first came and started he was a piss poor musician and the people around him were not good. So they didn't have a whole lot of range. So they played what they could and developed a unique sound because of their lack of ability, which mm. created a following. So wow, I, I like to say that I'm the Johnny Cash of of uh, day players, as it would be. <laughs> day yeah, cool. You must have a pretty strong following, though, from your character on 
uh, flats. No? I don't know. Um, I was very fortunate. I, I tell people I'm a journeyman actor because I served an indentured apprenticeship on Adult Swim. Hmm. Oh. I was hired as an extra on Adult Swim because I have a high forehead where they can mount some horns. And I did uh, four seasons of Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell as a red-faced devil with horns. And just like this, they gradually gave me things to do, more and more and more involvement. <clears throat> and I learned how to um, take advantage of, of the situation and, and try to make yourself unique and present yourself. Um, I did that today on the first take, and then the rest of the takes, they says, uh, go back to what was in the script. I says, yes, ma'am. Oh, uh, yeah. But the editor will choose. The editor will choose. You, you just never know what's going to show up. Sure. It's a half-hour situation comedy, Welcome to Flatch. And realistically, after the commercials, there's 23 minutes of what they film and and we take a week to film that 23 minutes so there's a lot of stuff that you know someone sits in a dark room with a big screen usually on a couch maybe two or three other people around and they decide what's going to be in the final cut so yeah it's fun it's interesting they're doing a good job it's hilarious i think it's a fantastic show um uh, the uh the addition this year of Jamie Presley does nothing but bring a fan base and brings a, a brash character that I really like. But there is no one on this show that is not helpful and friendly. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the, the seasoned actors here are like, let me help you out with that kind of thing. So I, I'm just, you know, I love it. Wow. Where where is the location for that? It's in somewhere else, isn't it? For Welcome to Flatch? Yeah. Okay, it's 30 min uh, 30 minutes outside of Wilmington, North mm. Carolina, mm. in a little town called Burgall, North Carolina. Okay. And they seem to love us. We we um own the town pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's great very interesting wow what about, what about what about your role in jumanji yeah jumanji how did that come about oh now that's that's an interesting thing realistically i am what the industry calls a day player i get a contract and I, 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 auditioning now is all by tape pretty much but you audition and they pick and 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 you show up and you say your seven eight little words that house burnt down three weeks ago or something like that and you're gone okay so jumanji welcome to the jungle i was hired on a one-day contract to uh be a vendor okay that's all i knew and <clears throat> A lot of people overthink their auditions. My audition was with a character, uh, Bethany, which was Jack Black. But nowhere did I research and find out that that was Jack. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm delivering these lines, rations, rations, get your rations, like a carnival barker. And they seem to like it. So <clears throat> I filmed Inside Atlanta, near near Spring Street, is an old Norfolk Railroad building with that that uh, 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 one level down um, area that they turned into the bazaar. And uh, we filmed that, that scene that I did from One Direction, and they had a tornado warning come through. And so everybody's off the set, into the building, into the basement. We were there. We lost about two, three hours come back out, set up. And the assistant director says to me, he says, hey, Willie, he says, uh, can you come back tomorrow? We rented one of these overhead expensive cameras that's on cables, like they have at the football games or baseball games that runs through the bazaar and follows the characters. He said, we're going to shoot that and we'll do your turnaround tomorrow. 
I says, great. Hey, there's another day. You know, no. Wow, I'm going to make big money. So um, overnight, the director wrote another scene for me and Kevin Hart. Wow. So if you're familiar with the movie, Kevin Hart it. plays the slow guy that's always last. And of course, I, I, I think it's too late for spoilers now, but mm -hmm. I kill him with my pound cake. Mm -hmm. So what they do instead of um, what, what the director wrote was as they are running out of the bazaar after their encounter with the snake and all those other things, he, they all run past me while I'm hawking my bread. Mm -hmm. And Kevin Hart's the last one and he chugs past me, looks, sees who I am, backs up, Punches me, I had to go ass over teacups, and then he goes on his way. That was the scene. So it required me to do a stunt. Wow. And so we spent probably a day doing that. And then, um, um, uh, so they brought me in another day for that. Then after that was all done, the second unit, which does all the stunts, and that show was full of stunts, has got to do the bizarre stunts and get them all done, like falling from the sky through the roof and all that. But, and my character standing there. So they either had to go find a stunt man, dress him up to look like me or just hire me. So I got seven mm. one day contracts, one after the other. Wow. Um, and I, I tell people, um, 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 about my SAG store and joining SAG. And the first thing I, jo I, I filmed after I joined SAG AFTRA was Jumanji. And I made $11,250 in those seven days. Now, normally, that's a, that's a weekly contract, 3000 4000 somewhere in that range, depending upon when. But yeah, I, I, I killed it. Whoa. And, and the residual formulas is like they divide up by the number of actors. Well, I was seven actors. I had seven contracts. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Oh, that's yes, great. it was. Awesome. So we have the Jumanji granite countertops. We have the Jumanji hardwood floors. And we have the new Jumanji carpet upstairs. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Let me just cap so them. Uh, oh, something tells me this is going to get bigger. This is, this is you're just great. I bet you're great to work with. I mean, you're great to talk to. I learned in working background that assholes don't get to come back. There you go. Yeah. So, I mean, I just try to be a nice guy about everything. And, and, and actually the secret is I have been married uh, over 52 <laughs> years. And in those 52 years, I have learned to take direction so I can, you know, I can I can listen to the director and do what they want. That's and and by the way, by the way, in those 52 years, never once did my wife or I consider divorce. Wow. Murder many times, <laughs> but never divorce. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, terrible. Oh, you guys are fresh, mate. This is this is this is old stuff. Uh, uh, this is beautiful. Save it up I, I love this. And what's funny about you and I, William, is we've worked with some of the same people because I've done extra work as like a fly on the wall. And I was working with Jack Black on this HBO show, The Brink. And it was funny, the studios that we filmed that we it was all night thing. And I'm playing a Pakistani. Go figure. It's yeah. an HBO show where he's a spy and he's he's doing the scene. And then he runs and he decks out in the bushes. And he's like, he gets out, stumbles, and Jack Black's like to all the extras, hey. How's it going, guys? <laughs> Everything good? Guy. Yeah, same thing with uh, Jamie Presley. I used to work with her on Mom. We would we would do the uh, scenes for the AA meetings. I was one of the AA people, and it was funny. Sometimes I get picked, sometimes I won. They'd be so you know how these wardrobe people are, and the sure. it, you know, oh, you're not wearing the right color. Hey, you can just sit sit and holding you. And and what's great about you is you get that. You get the terms holding. You get star wagon you get all that yeah i um i i love jack black um and and everyone on that show was great um jumanji 
Um, Dwayne Johnson has an entourage that just follows him like a little bunch of ants, you know, that don't. And and Kevin Hart pretty much as well. But Jack sat in holding with us along with Karen Gillian. Uh, and they are just sweethearts. Yeah. And we're sitting in holding. And one of the high school kids come in that plays high school. And I, I'm sure you're familiar with my Too Many Cooks role. I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. One of the kids come in and point at me and says, hey, too many cooks. Jack Black jumped up and says, you son of a bitch. I knew I knew you from somewhere. He went over and took a selfie with me and him oh. and put it on his Instagram. And it had like 12,000 likes the last time I looked at it. But yeah, nice guy. Very nice guy. Um, I told you I don't have a good memory. So... Um, in playing around, we were uh, we were changing things on the fly, yeah. and I dropped and none of it was ever used. But I dropped the line, and you know who picked me up? Jack Black, not not the script supervisor. Not, Jack fed me the line, so it's like, yeah, one of a cool. nice guy. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Same thing. I would with, love to uh, hang out with him. Same thing with Kevin Hart. He's very talented. I worked with him on real. Uh, Husbands of Hollywood, it was an award show, and he's just hilarious. Yes, he is. Uh, and <clears throat> I, I, uh, they were filming the, the movie Night School, Kevin Hart's film. And I know, I know the people that were casting the extras, and they were looking for a prisoner. Mm -hmm. So I called her. I said, hey, you want me to come do that? She says, yeah. I got on set, and Jack remembered. I mean, uh, Jack. Kevin Hart remembered me and said, I punched awesome. you out. I said, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, but I was just deep background, just being where we're uh, um, in the prison library, pulling a book or something like that. But yeah, I mean, everyone on that show were, were very personable, friendly kind of, you know, I'm hoping I get to come back. The, the, the last one they made left an intro that they were going to do sort of like, the original Jumanji with Robin Williams, where people from the game came into the real world. Mm. So maybe my character will get to come into the real world. I don't know. Yeah, I could think I, it. I would hope so. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the Atlanta scene like? Because you're in based out of Atlanta, and it's completely different than L.A. or New York, any of those places. And I've heard you say that you think it's going to overtake L.A. eventually, which it very well could. Uh that was a real possibility, but and um, uh, and politics, my politics align pretty much with the liberals that run this business, and uh, with George, with Georgia's new abortion ban that went into effect back in 2019. It first went into effect, and the All Star Game picked up and moved. Mm -hmm. And I, I think yeah, I think so what's I. going to happen is some productions are going to move and probably to North Carolina because North Carolina does not have a, a strict um, abortion ban. I, I, North Carolina went through that with their bathroom bill in the, uh, the mid early 2000s where the, uh, where the NBA all-star game left. And, mm -hmm. you know, but um, so yeah, the, the people will move with it. Atlanta in the last few years has built an infrastructure that can do anything. Mm. So they will continue. I think I, 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 <clears throat> I'm, I'm more, more respected outside of Atlanta than I am in just like a prophet's never, never uh, uh, believed in their hometown. But I go to Virginia, Kentucky, North Carolina, um where else am i going yeah but at any rate and i'll go work those easier than i do in georgia in georgia but i do work i mean i you know haven't got any recurring big things like this but i get fun little things to do oh i got one for you guys sure mm -hmm. um adult swim too many cooks that character i have reprised the role mm. um an HBO special by the same guy, K. 
Casper Kelly, who wrote and directed Too Many Cooks, is doing something. And the working title right now is Yule Log. Oh. It's sort of a, a, a murder mystery kind of thing. And I do a cameo as the Too Many Cooks killer. Oh, this is big. It's great. Well, no, it's not. It's you know, it's just a little, little, uh, uh, and I don't know, I didn't see the script. I read for a role that I didn't book. A friend of mine booked it. But um, yeah, he wrote a part for me just to reprise the, the Too Many Cooks guy. And I'm, I'm not going to give it away. So, uh, but I'm sure it'll be out within a year or so. Mm. It'll this be how a chain show. reaction will start. They're going to go, ah. The, the you know the cooks guy and then they'll say well what can we do with that and then something bigger will come up that you know chain reaction and that's what's going to happen here well i think welcome the flats too is really helping you out because look at us we reached out to you because uh you know welcome the flats is such a hit and your character right. in general you know well, you're, you're i am a so fan favorite i am appreciate i don't know if i'm a fan favorite but i am uh an interesting character um, you know, I mean, it's just a fun role to play. Uh, and and generally speaking, they give me the latitude that Adult Swim, Swim gave, actually demanded, uh, so I can play with the character. Paul Fegg and Jenny Bix, who are the show, uh, Jenny's the showrunner, but they're the executive producers that developed the show. They had a goal in mind that you as the viewer look at me and say, is that an actor or is he just really one of the people that live in that city? So they'll let me own the role. And, and the good example is the fact that if you watch the Brit show, Len's not a drinker, whereas mm. in Flatch, I'm a drinker. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And you've played some uh, really good parts where you're pretty angry, slamming doors in people's faces. Oh, yeah. That, that was a great one. Slamming the... That scared me because, you know, I mean, I slammed the door. I learned a long time ago, you do it for real and, you know, they'll they'll do the precautions. But, you know, I mean, it, I, that, that was like an inch from her nose when I slammed that door. Yeah. Or like the scene with the online dating where you where you go into the office and you're like, that's fake news that you can't send money on it. You know, <laughs> the writing is fantastic. Oh, it's hilarious! Oh, it's great. I, 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 if you look at my my face Facebook page, in describing myself, I say I'm just a shiny mirror that reflects the brilliance of the writer and the director. That's a beautiful because that's where it's sentiment. At. Yeah, yeah, that's perfectly said. Yeah, and it's true, but you know. I mean, and, and like I say, that show will let you develop, you know, your character. So now the show didn't have great ratings to begin with, but I think part of the idea is you have to develop the rapport with the characters. You have to develop your personal relation with, with whom you like. And it covers a broad range, whether it's the young kids, Kelly and Shrub, or whether it's father joe and his girlfriend cheryl or now jamie presley the brassy real estate divorcee that's gonna be great <laughs> i didn't get that far but yeah she's I, brand I, I new like yeah. yeah yeah it's coming yeah. out this season that's oh, why oh 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 and this season starts on september 29th mm, right. which is Ooh, really a good soon. turn yeah yeah very soon I'm here, and I, you guys play golf. I Not me so much. very, very little. You play golf a lot? Uh, no, but what <laughs> I've heard was we're going to get a back nine, and they're not talking about golf. Hmm. They're thinking that we this season two will be thirteen episodes, and if if uh, 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 the first episode's well received, they'll add nine more on the back end. Oh, oh, that's excellent. I, now I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was, that's, funny. Yeah. that's funny. That's a cool way to say it. And you just broke your non-disclosure agreement by saying that. Well, no, I'm kidding. It's I'm all kidding. rumor. It's all yeah. rumor. <laughs> well, hopefully it gets picked up for many more seasons. Don't you wish? I really, really think it's got the potential to go a, a 10-year show. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know what, you know what it reminds me of, William? Is it rem- It's very similar to like a, what Parks and Rec was. I worked on Parks and Rec a ton of times. And it's the, the same thing, but not focused on City Hall or the town. You know, it really has that feel to it. What do you think? I think you are correct. I think uh, it's 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 wanting for the people to bind themselves to this character. You know, what they did for a major network was totally crazy. They took the first seven episodes before they aired on Fox and put them on Hulu. Oh, okay. Wow. So the kids That's could smart. Binge. Well, yeah, the kid, <clears throat> excuse me, the kids could binge watch this, the streamers as it would be, could watch it with the idea that we'll bring them along for the next seven episodes. And it did show an increase. But then again, shameless self-promotion that I do. Um, if you're my Facebook friend, you got an invitation to click on the 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 link for IMDb to run the numbers up so they think people are really watching this show. Mm. <laughs> but um I'm I'm just happy to be there. I'm I'm just happy to be there. I think it's very popular though. I don't think it's just you having someone click on a IMDb page. I think there's like a cult following or whatever it may be. Well <clears throat> my cult following is from too many cooks. Okay. Now those are <clears throat> I have a little video where I introduce myself and my name is, is, is Bill and I'm an out. No, wait, that's wrong meeting. Uh, <laughs> um, um, but um, where I say I am William and I'm an actor and my friends call me Bill, but my fans, they call me creepy uncle Bill. <laughs> I love it. Uh, well, if well, you don't think that's true, when you get done with this, Google the words "creepy Uncle Bill" and see who shows up. Oh, oh I'm sure exactly that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great. Yeah, Brian, we're in the wrong city. We should be over in North Carolina. Uh, you, you know, know yeah. I mean, uh, uh, do you do you, you kind of base yourself there, or, you, or it's Atlanta mostly? I'm based in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. This is this is the only show I've done in North Carolina. Oh. But then again. This is um, uh, a recurring character. I did 12 episodes of season one. I don't think I'll do that many this time. Mm. Um, um, but I never know, you know, because they're writing this stuff the same while we're while we're filming and someone's writing the next episode. You know? So you still get offers and you got to juggle that, right? You go and do a little thing here and well, there we, and schedule it. I, and- I'm not the normal direct offer guy. The only Mm -hmm. direct offer I have received was on um, uh, Apple's TV show. No, I'm sorry. uh, Disney's TV show, Just Beyond. Mm -hmm. Episode two, I'm a floating head in a blue orb that the aliens worship. You know? Wow. Wow. It's just a relationship with the casting director. And uh, so, no, I don't normally get direct offers. And my, my agent's smart enough to know that uh, I'm going to be here for available here till the end of October. Now, whether I work all of that is another thing. So she's not going to look for work for me that would conflict. I yeah, think I, did, yeah, of course. I just did an audition for something that will film after October 17th. But, uh, you know. Well, it seems now, so fun and easy to work with. I'm sure that'll get around it after where people just like to you know, work with fun, nice people and don't want any headaches, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's yeah. a great, a great, that's probably the greatest business model that you have going, you know, it's just like, you're just charming. Well, I, I um, yeah, I, I, uh, my wife doesn't working think well, so, but yeah. <laughs> oh, you're hilarious. That's great. So you again, really inspired me. I mean, so you just picked up and said, I've got enough cushion here and I'm going to go try this thing. And now it's kind of snowballing a little bit and yes. hopefully an avalanche will happen someday. So what if someone has a little time on their hands? What do you say? You know, you, what do you say to them? Take those classes. Is that your advice then? Well, my first advice would be go do some background work because you see what it's really like. It just amazed me that to do one 30 second scene, they film it 27 times from 12 different angles. 
and the editor puts it together. See what it's like. Get on set and try to identify these people. Who is the cinematographer? Who is the director? Who is the assistant director? Identify them by their jobs. So you feel comfortable in dealing with that. And then you go take a class. Um, where I got my class was a little place called Drama Inc. in Atlanta. There's four working actors, Jason McDonald, his lovely wife, um, Catherine Dyer, um, and Scott and Catherine, and uh, forgive me, I can't remember shit. But at any rate, um, um, they they have a lovely little school and they don't need my promo now because they got waiting lists. But uh, 2014, I guess, when I took the class, um, yeah, there was no waiting list. But now people are waiting to get in. And they do run virtual classes as well. And then I tell people, I says, any good acting studio, you want to learn a little bit about acting? They offer free audits in their class where you go in and sit down in the class and observe. Some places actually let you participate. Audit three places before you decide to spend your money decide where you fit in huh. and, and then try to get on camera student films 48 hour film festivals um uh, thesis films for uh, savannah college of art and design for uh, university of north carolina i try to get on camera so much that I drained my savings account getting on the ATM camera. Wow, that's hilarious. Oh my goodness. I love it. Now, William, oh, explain awesome. to the listeners what the final shot is of the day. Oh, yeah. Do, do you know what the I'm martini talking about? Martini shot. Exactly. <laughs> Ryan doesn't know this. The martini shot. You're over there, you're filming maybe sometimes like 12, 16 hours a day. They yell out martini. You're like, yes, we yeah. finally get to go home. Oh, oh, that's hilarious. Oh, you actors. Yeah, I only did musical stuff. Well, musical stuff is fun. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not going to tell you who I worked with, but he, uh, he was a little guy singing in uh, Cyrano de Bergerac, the oh. new film. And um, wow. he, he and I were in prison together mm. and they were looking for an actor with false teeth because my character provided a service while he was in prison with them and now oh. he, yeah you dirty mind boys huh? <laughs> and now he's getting out of prison and it's a remake uh, or tr it's it's a reboot remake inspired by mm. brothers with uh devito and schwarzenegger oh, oh wow got josh brolin in it uh, oh twins remake of twins right inspired by twins yeah maybe yeah yeah maybe. devito and schwarzenegger were in twins together no okay. it's the same thing yeah same idea but i think they're called uh, the working title was brothers i don't probably, know probably yeah that makes sense but it's got glenn close and it's Whoa. got uh, and josh brolin Josh wow. Brolin and um, Brandon Fraser. I did a scene with Brandon oh, Fraser and, great. and oh, Peter when they were getting out. I love him. I, I just and watched a blast from the past and I love it. I love his work. He's so funny. He is. Uh, you're talking about Peter, right? Or Brandon. Brandon. Okay. Brandon, Fraser, yeah. Brandon was funny. He made fun of what I did <laughs> while I was in prison. <laughs> but, um, Peter Dinklage never left character. Oh, sage actors they stay in character and his character is getting ready to leave prison so what he's doing is he's packing his stuff and humming while he's doing it and he did one take he's executive producer so he can do whatever the hell he wants to do he did one take where he sung and him and the director got into it where i, I don't think the director liked it but so we got back to holding and I looked at him and I says, well, I liked your singing. He broke character and he says, now, what was your name, sir? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. smart. That's, 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 that's a fun, that's a good fun story. Fun. Yes. That's great. Now, what about on a regular day? You actually have your own trailer, no? Or are you hanging out in holding? I actually, uh, this season, I'm billed as a guest star. There's a, uh, 
I'm not really into this a whole lot, but basic, basically I work as a, an actor that works for scale plus 10% for my age. Okay. As long as they do that, I'm, I'm happy. Sure. But a, a lot of people are concerned about billing. Uh, you build as a, on a TV show as a co-star, you're not an integral part of the show. If you're billed as a guest star, you're a more important part of the show and you get a bigger trailer. Mm -hmm. um, last season, I would be in what's known as a honey wagon, you know, just a little... Uh, now this sure. season i'm going to be a guest star that's what it says and i'm going to be in a trailer that's no less than three units or something like i got there first day guess where they put me <laughs> in the honey wagon uh -huh. but i never complained i yeah, it's not a problem so it's like it's like i don't care those things yeah. don't don't bother me uh, my agent says um uh, I'm going to try to get you bigger billing. And I says, don't worry about it, but you do what you want to do. But what we've decided is we're going to try to develop this character more. Sure. Or you worry about that, make the character be an integral part of the show. You know, I've That's got beautiful. this, I've got this, I'm, I'm, I'm an old man. I'm 74 years old. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Wow. You don't look it. I thought you'd be well, 64. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got this idea. I, I'm going to try to approach someone before this season is over to film a scene where the two kids call me on the other side of the highway. And I run across the highway and this huge transfer truck goes whomp right through and, you know, you're gone and it kills me. Mm. Right? Oh, geez. So I will film that and they can put it in the can. And then if I die or become sick or they get pissed at me, they can use it. And the only thing I'm asking in return is a full panel, you know, with William and da da da, da you know, that's all. They don't even need to shoot much of you yourself to get that done. No, no. no. So, you know, it's it's and, and it's it's just weird shit that, that's smart. That, no, I don't know if it's smart, but it's just interesting. And maybe someone watching this, it'll get back to them. I don't know. And and about you is it's obvious that you're so likable. So whatever you accomplish on flats, you know they'll recommend you. you oh, some I know it doesn't think. really work that way, but no. you would think. No, no, you would think it doesn't hold you back. You know, uh, <clears throat> most of the people I work with are trained professional actors that they're really into this, and I'm. You know, just somebody having a good time it, it, at the end of his life, having a good mm -hmm. time, doing doing something I enjoy and and having a little bit of money. You know, to, I, I, I don't think I mentioned what I did for my granddaughter. No, no let's talk about I, it. I've got a granddaughter went off to college in University of Tennessee and my daughter's. Yeah, why is she going to drive that 10 year old car up there? So. Thanks to Flatch, I went to the local Chevrolet dealer and says, what's the cheapest car you got? And they got a little Chevrolet Spark with hand mm -hmm. crank windows. Yeah. Bought her a brand new car to go to college. Wrote him a check. So wow. was, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. There's nothing more it. beautiful. I can I can do that. I can do that. So, yeah. It's, mm. So I'm That's very inspirational. So what when you decided I'm going to do this, what's the and you said, uh, what's the first little thing you did? Where'd you get a job? You know, do you, you said you the got first into thing the I did was a film called The Odd Life of Timothy Green. And they actually shot it with film. It was uh, um, um, Jennifer. Oh, you're going to have to look it up. I, uh, uh, but anyway, Odd Life of Timothy Green. And I was just background in a town meeting. I worked five days and I spent three days in holding. I never got out till, till, uh, till uh, the uh, last two days when they had everybody in the town meeting kind of thing. And I said, hey, I still enjoyed it. I, you know, and then gradually I would get featured roles and hmm. I just, you know, yeah, this is cool. That this seems cool. like fun work. I mean, yeah, but even further back in the background you know i mean did you do other jobs like that or just uh, acting really i i i have done more extra work than i'd care to remember mm -hmm. um, i know what you mean 
and um, I lose track of them for a while. Um, I did a uh, flight with Denzel Washington where mm, Denzel well, uh, was yeah. in prison and uh, I was one of the convicts as the camera strolled around and looked nice guy uh, uh, spoke. It was a big shot for blocking and, you know, had a long conversation. And the odd part is it was filmed in a, in a uh, county jail here in Atlanta, uh, Gwinnett County. And it was the same place. I just did the brothers thing. You know, it's like, mm. I know this, I've been here before. <laughs> so when you do, when you do extra work and you come back to those places, my wife says, when I do die, she's going to have me cremated and get a case of them old 35 millimeter film canisters. Ooh, nice. Fill my ashes up in those 35 millimeter film canisters and then advertise on Facebook to all my friends that she'll send them one. And they can sprinkle it on the sets where I used to hang out. Wow. Wow. Unreal. That's yes, it is. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about in Atlanta? If you want to get into extra work, how did you get your extra work? Was it Central it's Casting or where was it? Facebook. Hmm. Um, basically, every casting agency in Atlanta has a Facebook page where they say, we need old people, we need young people, we need, and uh, you just apply. And if you show up and do your job and keep quiet in between the takes and sure. do what you're supposed to, you'll get to come back more and more. Uh, they filmed Watchmen, the HBO series Watchmen. They were filming a series right in the town where I live, mm. five miles from the house. And I looked at the Facebook, I follow Facebook on it, and it says, we need a mature couple. And it listed who was in it. Tim Blake Nelson was one of the actors in it. So I said to the wife, I say, hey, you want to go meet Tim Blake Nelson? She says, yeah. So I sent a message to the woman, says, how about me and my wife? And they says, yeah, we'll book you. So Sounds we like that. Go to this. I think it's episode two. It's an ED support meeting. Mm. Emotional distress. It's not what you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and if you've ever been to an AA meeting, at the end of the meeting, you all hold hands and say a prayer. Yeah. They had us all hold hands and say a serenity prayer for in the story Watchmen. People had this great trauma that they lived through that changed their lives. And there's a couple of day players I know that are SAG members just like me doing the exact same thing I am. And my wife and four other extras that I knew. So I asked the AD, I said, are you going to pay us for this? He says, no. I said, okay. So I got somebody in wardrobe to snatch me a copy of the dialogue. And so I filed a claim with SAG six months later all my wife and the four other extras all got bumped to principal. So now my wife is SAG eligible. Wow. Not that so you'll ever move. do anything. That was cool. Not, not that, that you'll cool. ever do anything with, but it was, it was just to go do that. So it's like, if I find a, and not so much now, um, I have a two year old living with us. My um, firstborn grandchild came back with a two-year-old and we provided a place and we're, we're trying to get her through college so she'll be a teacher and can have a good life without worrying about. But long story short, I don't do as much as I used to. But if I see something that looks interesting, something I want to do, I, I'll still go do extra work. I did, I did a day on DMZ, the, mm. the HBO series, Ava Dune. And Ava walked down the road and she says, give that man a line. So I got bumped up uh, principal still when, when I do it. Now, I worked as an extra on Stallone's new movie that's coming out on Prime called Samaritan. Mm. With that idea, I yeah. probably got some FaceTime. I don't know, but I never got bumped on that. But if there's a fun project, you know, I'll go do it. My agent hates that because if it's, if it's a TV show, I can't come back. Oh, okay. In other words, like Stranger Things, episode four this year, I did uh, 
a guy in an insane asylum playing chess with himself outside. No kidding. Berry College in, in Rome, Georgia. So I can't do an audition for that because I have been on the show in a different role. You know? ah, or nice. Well, that's the way the industry normally goes. If you're if you've been seen, you know, you're you're they they, they don't they don't want you to come back as someone else. Oh, that's true. The big boys can do that, but uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, and it's it's good, it's great, you know, like because like I say, I'm just out there trying to enjoy it and have a good time and and you know, make a little money, do stuff, you know. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> it seems a little bit easier than L.A. L.A. was, you know, you do the Facebook thing on Central Casting, but you call in and say, we can use you. We can't use you uh, with Central Casting. You'd have to register first off. Central. And then sometimes they would call you. You would call in like they booked me on. Uh, what was it? I think Ray Donovan is a prisoner. Well, I don't look like a prisoner type. They call you so late in the day saying, you know, we changed our mind. We can't use you anymore. So it's too late in the day. You can't book for something else. And I mean, they gave me some great roles like White House staffer. I was a, a soccer referee in Ray Donovan, all kinds of different roles, even period pieces. Uh, but it seems a lot easier in Atlanta than L.A. I will say this without bad mouthing anybody. Um, the, the casting companies that are not central casting are very good and helpful and kind and friendly. And they maintain the attitude that a rising tide lifts all boats. And they will help each central other out. Central casting that are not central casting. Central oh, wait, casting is the one that uh, Brad Pitt quit. You know, they weren't booking Brad Pitt. Central casting, uh, now, I'm probably never going to get a- Central casting moved into central Atlanta. Casting, yeah. I'll tell you my only central casting story. Okay. Um, there it. was a short-lived TV show called Florida Girls okay. with Laura Chin uh, and a great little show. Um, I had I told you I did, you know, being a nice guy, I worked some jobs down in Savannah and the woman that was casting sent me a message says, hey, this show is looking for somebody that can play a drunk. I came to mind. <laughs> so um, I sent a little tape of me staggering. And they says, they got no money, but I'll get you 200 a day to be an extra, which is decent money. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's great. I have a son living in Savannah, so I can go stay with him. So I went and I did two episodes down there with them. And um, this young lady, uh, her husband was in the military. She got transferred to Australia so she could no longer cast extras. And... Central Casting picked it up. Mm. And when I dealt with Central Casting and says, yeah, I'm getting 200 a day. Oh, no, you're not. I said, no, yeah, I believe it. Working. Yeah, yeah. then I'm not working. Uh, uh -oh. But long story short, um, I played Kim Whitley's husband, a drunk. And the opening episode, she hid my clothes so I couldn't get to the liquor store. So my daughter is driving down the road uh, um, uh, and spots me in a pair of blue um, um, tights with a white beater t-shirt on, wearing a pair of pink pumps walking to the liquor store. Oh, oh that's Blue hilarious. Pills. And it's <laughs> like- Whatever you can find. Get in the car, Chuck. You know? <laughs> so um, I, when I got this job, well, what happened was uh, Pop Network was where it was and it uh, got bought by CBS. CBS dropped the show. Lionsgate says, hey, we're going to do the show and we'll market it. We'll sell it somewhere else. And I got an audition to reprise my role as Chuck. And I was going to have a British accent, you know. So it's like, damn, this is terrific. But COVID killed it. Mm. And they just shut it down. <clears throat> Where was I going with that? Um, <laughs> but at any rate, long story short, right. central casting, I'm, I'm not happy and don't say, I, I don't bad mouth people, but I just don't say anything good about central casting. No, at least I, in, I, in LA, that's where I got the most of my work and I'm, I'm grateful to them, but I know how they operate. That's LA. 
Yeah, I know. I know it, what you mean. It, it's much different it, it, in Atlanta. In Atlanta, it's all on Facebook, and it's all. Well, it was Facebook there too. You went on their Facebook page, and then you called in. And before that, you'd I've I've done it so long ago that you'd call a calling line, and they'd say, oh. "Ugly Betty is looking for this. CSI yeah. New York's looking for this." You know, and then you'd call in and uh, book yourself. They switched it over to Facebook, where you'd look on the Facebook page the day before and get booked. So you'd yeah. be in hold, holding, booking for tomorrow's uh, job. <laughs> but I, <clears throat> I would get to know the people that are casting it to the point where I could message them, and I'm, since I'm such a nice guy, they'd say, "Oh sure, yeah, come on. that makes you sense." Know. So if y'all could stick a pin in a map, if you wanted to start something like this, where do you think the best place to settle your butt down if you really wanted to start this, this and, and kind of avoid, it, it seems like everyone's trying to avoid the biggest companies now and kind of sidestep all that a little bit and use Facebook and stuff to kind of finagle around things. Atlanta like is just wide about. open. I can't mm. tell you how many LA actors or uh, 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 potential actors, people that were doing background work while trying to get their break, get their SAG card, have moved to Atlanta. It's much easier to get an agent mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Um, wow. It's, That's good intel. I mean, yeah, to it me. It really is, yeah. But, uh, of course, I'm going to get hate mail because it's getting crowded. Yeah, yeah. The secrets like that don't last long. Yeah. No. What but, is it like well, to live in Atlanta, too? It's cheaper, for one thing. Um, it, Atlanta is, is although everywhere is expensive now, but Atlanta, generally, the cost of living was much lower than New York or... Uh, uh, LA, LA, Chicago. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that goes to ridiculous levels. I could never and do the, that. The weather's not bad. And, you know, if you, if you need an ocean, you just a couple hours down the road to Savannah. Wow, that's um, true. Yeah. And it's got just about everything that, and, and we had a, we had Pinewood studio. It's now Trillist, uh, the, the people that own uh, Chick-fil-A, which I won't go into their politics, um, <laughs> basically run that studio now. Sure. Um, wow. We've got a lot of studio. In fact, <clears throat> there's, um, I retired from General Motors. There was an assembly plant in Doraville, and it's wow. demolished now, with the exception of an old General Foods warehouse that was in the back, hmm. is now Third Rail Studio, a first-class okay. soundstage studio. Um, yeah, but there's some office. big buildings. I had an office in that building as a, a trainer i used to teach people how to program and repair robots i i'm an elect i was an electrician by trade mm -hmm. but basically general motors has a program called train the trainer where they look for a an intelligent uh, um, um technical guy that can bullshit to other people and send him off to some college courses on how to teach adults and then all the different plants throughout the corporation they have a train the trainer program where they might get the new equipment in Texas and I'll go to Texas for a week, learn it, and then set up a training cell at my plant. And an assembly plant will have 200 electricians. So it's like a whole lot cheaper for them to train me, set up a cell rather than um, send everybody off to factory school. But mm -hmm. long story short, um, I went and worked Dolly Parton's heartstrings as a extra just to get back inside the building and see what what it's oh, like. I love her. Oh, she is yeah. great. Oh my goodness. On my Instagram page, and my politics are probably obvious by now, I make a statement that no one is above the law, except for maybe Dolly Parton. Oh yeah, Dolly Parton, yes. <laughs> That's great. I agree with that. That is awesome. As being an, when you were an extra, was there any actors that stood out to you that you were able to either meet or work in scenes with? Hmm. Matt Servito hmm. and Henry Zembrowski. Okay. Matt Servito from The Sopranos. Mm -hmm. He played yeah. the devil in uh, uh, Adult Swim's Your Pretty mm -hmm. Face is Going to Hell, which we went four seasons. Oh, and by the way, um, Adult Swim, Swim did uh, 
lose that live action because um, AT&T bought HBO. HBO mm -hmm. wants all the live action. You just do all animated. No. And all that's changed oh. now since Discovery has bought it now. Mm -hmm. But long story short, uh, they made some animated shorts and I got to work two of them. So if uh, your pretty face hell comes back, it'll come back animated and I'll get to read dialogue in the studio. Ooh, right? Easy money. Try to That's remember. Yeah. yeah. Dude, you're busy. You're a busy guy. Um, no one is ever as busy as they want to in the business. Uh, but I have enough to make sure I don't get a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> that is beautiful. Wow. Yeah. I'm totally inspired. And it, if they leave you out of an episode, it's going to be the lowest rating episode of the season. I really like to hear people say that. We're being <laughs> honest, though. Yeah. When I did too many cooks, I would go to the gas station and someone would come up to me. Hey, can I have a selfie with you? That hasn't happened with Len in, in mm. Welcome to Flash. It will. Oh, it will. <laughs> no kidding. I will. Well, yeah. You know, I like will, you said, will, though. The binge watchers, you know, that show is binge worthy because it's just so, you know, yeah, I get caught up in that. I, I admit I, I binge watch some things and uh, that one's going to catch me off guard. I can tell you it's going to make three hours go by just like that. Jenny Bixon, Paul Fegg, uh, that's that's where the credit goes uh, as far as that concept. And, and just I, the shrub character has just got me hooked already. <laughs> it's great. Oh, wow. Yeah. COVID probably saved me on that. Mm. We started filming that in March of 2020. I drove up here to Wilmington. They filmed one day before I started. They filmed on a Monday and I was supposed to start Tuesday. So I drove up on that Monday, checked into my hotel, found a place to go get a hamburger I got a call from the line producer. We're shutting it down. We're going home. Mm -hmm. COVID. That was before all the COVID restrictions. The Southeast was quicker than anyone else to adapt COVID regulations to where, you know, we would mask and we would vaccinate and, and, and the precautions that were involved. It, and I was booked for the pilot. And you know, when they film a pilot, a lot of times they change characters, mm -hmm. they change the actors and that. And that probably would have happened to me because uh, I, I was nobody's name. I, I didn't have any following from, from that show. But six months later, March, April, May, June, July, almost September, almost nine months later, I, uh, they started production up again. And Fox saw 10 hours that that uh, Holmes Holmes, Kelly and Sam Straley Shrub filmed and gave them 14 episodes on that. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> now what they did was everybody that was booked for the pilot now is on a contract. I was on a five episode contract and I'm like, wow, this is the pinnacle of my career. And so when I got there and I got to play. That's when I got more. Mm. Uh, episode one, you've seen the bit with me at the very end with the outhouse? Yeah. The original script on that was I was supposed to go run to the outhouse when the fireworks went off. And Paul Fegg was directing and he said to me, he says, okay, I don't, I'm going to direct the main unit, just direct yourself. Bold statement. So I talked to the two camera people that were set up to view the outhouse. I said, keep it rolling after I do my thing. So I ran, I went into the outhouse, dropped my drawers down around my ankles, to come out while I was pulling them up. That's what they kept. They kept the coming out. And I could hear Paul Fegg laughing hysterically <laughs> on the other side of the set. Shortly thereafter, I got, uh, extension for what uh, seven more episodes so COVID gave me the chance to play and then I just made some bold choices and and got, got you have a knack for this yeah you really do <sighs> well it's just, it's just 
what I tell people is, I hey, you were a kid. You did play pretend. Little boys, you played army. Little girls, you had tea parties. Go back and be that kid. Go back and be that kid. And don't an overanalyze this shit. Just do it. Be that kid. And that's, I'm just a big, I'm in my second childhood is what, what I am. So I just, just yeah. do play pretend. You look like you're having a lot of fun. Great. Really? Yeah, I am. I, and I enjoy these these interviews because it just allows me to to say you don't have to be a working actor. You don't have to teach classes and tape auditions and coach people. You can just go be an actor. Go sure. have fun. And, and I, if you look at my IMDb page, I think I've got about 90 things I've done. And the first first five or six years, nothing paid me. I mean, I would go work and make films for nothing. Two young boys called the Cooper Brothers in Detroit, Michigan, were Too Many Cooks fans. And says, hey, we've got this little short we want to make and we'd like you to be in it. And we'll fly you up and put you up in a hotel. But there's no money. I said, yeah, let's go do it. <laughs> it's called Five Windows by the Cooper Brothers. It's five minutes long. It's on IMDb. Both boys are out in L.A. right now working as producers, producers, assistants, that sort of thing. When I filmed Flatch, I never see any rushes. Nobody shows me what I've done. Mm -hmm. Nobody shows me what's going to be kept, what's not going to be kept. Right. I get this email from one of the Cooper brothers with a picture of me coming out of the outhouse. <laughs> he says, I'm working on a fox mm. sizzle reel, and who the hell do I find? <laughs> so he sent me a picture, made my day. Uh, sure. So cool. No, they kept that. You know what I'm saying? So then when the episode came out, I just I just had a ball. But yeah, so yeah, I got friends in 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 low places, and maybe they'll move up and become high places. I don't know. Wow. But yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Just don't be an asshole and that's the coolest thing to tell that's the coolest takeaway you know uh you know anyone can just get into it you know and all you got to do is stay focused keep going and don't be an asshole, I love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. asshole. beautiful well this was such a great interview william we really you know appreciate you coming on and that's why we do this that's why brian and i do this is to bring you know people like you the Famous types, up and coming artists, you name it. Between... I like I like to say I'm infamous. You've been all over the place. You are infamous. You are. You had really cool stories, and um... hey, hey, I'll tell you what. And most of them are true. <laughs> most of them. I know these are all true. These just smack of truth. I know it. Jack Nicholson said, "I'm going to tell." Uh, at least one version of the truth, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you gotta love them. But uh, and and that's probably that's that's probably the guy I'd really love to work with. I would, I bear somewhat of a resemblance if I take the beard off, <laughs> and I would go work oh. as his stand-in or extra yeah, for sure. ever. I'd love to do. He was supposed to do a little film, um, and he's he's like me, can't remember shit anymore. So, but. You kind of do have his eyes. Now I see it. You know, you're so, uh, your personality is kind of opposite of his, you know, so I didn't really see there was, but now that I look at you, you could definitely stand the stand in. The stand doesn't say anything. He just lets them run the focus on him. And, you know. I I do my own stand in on this show. I, I tell him, don't fire him. I said, but I don't mind standing here. Just shoot it. You know, I've been here before. Uh, you know? That is so cool. That was yeah. so cool. You're living life to the fullest, man. And just like, you're getting more and more successful as you go. That's just so awesome. The harder I work, the luckier I get. Yep. There's a good lesson in there somewhere, folks. All right. I'll tell you what, guys, when you do, I, I assume you're going to edit this a little bit. Probably oh, no, not. we're we're playing we, we it just like yeah. this. It was perfect. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I don't like cool. to do that. Well, let me know when the link comes up and I'll share it. No, we you. appreciate it. Hey, Thank William, you. Follow us. We appreciate on, it so much. Uh, and we hope to get YouTube, you back sometime yeah. real soon. We, if you see something that's interesting that 
you think I might have, uh, I might be able to contribute in a humorous way? I'm happy to. Thank oh, you, sure. William. We would love it. Yeah. And as well, always, we don't want to keep you too much longer. I mean, we've been rolling more than an hour and now I could talk to you we? all night. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I could talk to you all night too, but longer than what? Four episodes of Welcome to Flat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait to get deep into that. You know, talking to you just makes me want to get in there even further. You know, you're so, you're so charming. Uh, well, I will say this much. Uh, the critics, and just because it, 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 it wasn't, it was an episode that I particularly like, what I got to do, but they say the cast and crew came together by episode six. Mm. So episode 106 Rest in peace, Cynthia. It's worth looking at, and it's on Hulu right now, and I think it's on Fox now, which you can stream. Probably that what? makes sense. Okay, I'm 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 not exactly. I'm not. Um, we'll post literate. the IMDb link to the show, and we'll also post your social media so people can follow you because sure. In I fact, do you do you get into social media? Do you want to share anything while you're here? Any um, organizations or charities or anything that are important to you, anything you'd like to share, please do. Um, and I know this is going to kill me, but I get people that want headshots and stuff like that. And what I tell them is I will mail you a headshot. Just donate five bucks to the USO. Yeah. That is beautiful. I love it. The USO. That's cool. That's cool. Something that's been, uh, you know, not too much attention has been given that to as time rolls on. I um I benefited from them. I'm I'm a, uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I, I wow. my claim, thank you for your service. You thank know. you. Yes. My claim to fame, I I well, it's mostly true, is the fact that I shared airspace with John McCain over North Vietnam. But no kidding. Wow. I was just I was just a passenger in another plane doing spooky stuff while they were up doing their thing. But yeah. Wow. Doing the scary stuff. Thanks again. Yeah. For yeah. your service. Appreciate it. Well, it's been great having you, Mark. You want to say anything else? No, I would just want to say this is Mark 2.0. Follow us on Facebook for the video. I mean, on YouTube for the video version of the podcast. You can put a face to these people. We're also on all audio platforms. We're on Instagram, TikTok, and I am Mark of Mark 2.0. That is Brian. William, thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate it. Welcome to Flats. Take it away when the season premiere is. September 29th, season two will premiere at nine o'clock, I believe. Excellent. Thanks so much. Mark 2.0. Remember that Thank name. Thank you, William.